like you Change me from the inside Change me out
Somebody should give God praises tonight. Somebody should lift your voices wherever you are. And you should give God a mighty praise. You should give God a glorious praise. Come on, if you're believing that God is going to change you from the inside out, you should open your mouth and you should say, Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glorious be unto the mighty God. Hallelujah to the great I am. Hallelujah to the I am that I am. Praise God, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. Hallelujah. The first and the last, that which was, which is, and forevermore. For the great and mighty Elohim, the creator of the entire world, the creator of everything that exists, is because of him tonight. Almighty God, Yahweh. Ho shakarabasata, robo sheketaya, makarosataya, our king, our king of kings, and our lord of lords. Somebody just take a moment right where you are tonight and give the Lord glory and honor and majesty and dominion and praise because it belongs to him tonight. Praise God wherever you are. Just lift your hands, lift your voice, and say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your steadfast love. Hallelujah. The word of God declares that his loving kindness is better than life. His loving kindness is what? Better than life. And then he said, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. And the scripture proclaims, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Hosanna to the King. And then he said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name Jah. Blessed be the name Jehovah. Praise God. And then he said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually forever be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast of the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Somebody set up some fire and give God a mighty, mighty, mighty shout of praise. Come on, give him a mighty shout of praise wherever you are tonight. God bless you. God bless you. Give him a resounding praise. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Welcome. God bless all of you tonight that are coming in with us, that are coming into our time of this altar. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Back by prayerful demand is what I'm calling it tonight. Back by prayerful demand. So many of you have been calling and asking, please tell prophetess to continue tonight. Praise God. Amen. And after going before the Lord, hallelujah, I finally got the release. My God, hallelujah. You know, there's so many times people discuss, how do I know what the will of God is concerning me in a particular instance? Amen. Somebody said the other day, I want to be in the will of God. Praise God. Amen. And then somebody else said, but as long as God permits me, I don't mind. Some people don't mind being in the permissive will. But I believe, praise God, that God has one will. And that is his perfect will. Praise God. Sometimes he permits you to do some things. Praise God. But I want to be in the center. Center focal of his divine will. And his divine purpose. Tonight, may the perfect will of God be done concerning every one of you that is under the sound of my voice. Hallelujah. I just celebrate all of you tonight as you are coming in. Praise God. As you're coming into the throne room, this altar is a burning altar. An altar. Praise God. The Bible said they took the coals from the altar and then he touched my lips in the book of Isaiah chapter 6. Amen. The seraphims, praise God, took coals from the altar of fire and place it upon the lips of Isaiah. And Isaiah, praise God, how he said, I saw the Lord. Jeremiah said, it was like fire. Your word is like fire. Shut up in my bones. So even though we as the servants of God, we are sometimes contemplating whether we should come forth with some titles or some word Praise God. Amen. Even though it may seem as if it's an unpopular word. But God knows exactly what his people needs to hear. And when they need to hear it. Paul said this in the book of Corinthians. Concerning prayer. He said I will pray with the spirit or in the spirit. But I will also pray with the understanding. So that tells me right there. There's a time that you need to have perfect understanding. Of what God is saying to you. And what you are going through. You know when you are going through some things. It's okay to just wing it. But when you have an understanding. Of what is happening to you. And what is attacking you. You can deal with it better. Is this not true tonight? I intend to bring spiritual enlightenment. And spiritual revelation. To every one of you tonight. Concerning your spiritual battle. Concerning your spiritual warfare. And some of the things you are passing through. That's what the Lord has sent me to do tonight. He said bring revelation. And give the people. The spiritual information. As to what they need. Because do not be ignorant. I don't want you to be ignorant. Concerning Satan's devices. I don't want you to be in the dark. Concerning praise God. What is affecting you. And what is attacking you. The spirit of God has sent me tonight to bring divine enlightenment so that you can be delivered from the plans of the enemy. So do me a favor. Those of you that are coming in, welcome. Whatever platforms you're watching me on, whatever platform you're joining us on, please let us know where you're coming from tonight. Hallelujah. Let me know what city you're watching us in. Let me know, praise God, where you're, where you're being blessed by this program. Hallelujah. Let me know, praise God, so that I, as we begin to pray tonight and prophesy, I believe that tonight is going to be a night of, amen, strategic prayer. And it's also going to be a time of strategic deliverance. Hallelujah. As I prophesy and speak to your life, I believe that many of you are going to receive, amen, transformation. You know the word of God says be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be transformed but transformed by the renewing of your mind. So I believe tonight as we engage this moment. This is going to be a night like no other. This is going to be a time like no other. 
Hallelujah. You will never see this. You've never seen such a time like this before. So do me a favor. Get to all your neighbors. Get to all your friends. Get to everyone, praise God, that you know need to get delivered. That has been under some kind of demonic attack. Some type of raging warfare that they could not explain. And I want to help them tonight. I don't care if there's your friend or your foe. I don't care if they are, praise God, your enemy. Even the ones you don't know. Just send the link out to them. And let them know tonight God has a word. For them, your prophet, the servant, the born servant of the Lord. Prophetess Maddie Nordich is here tonight to help every last one of you. Praise God. So take a minute and just do that. Praise God. While some of you are sending out this link, very quickly, praise God. Amen. Let's not waste any time. Let's not waste the oxygen or the air of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. My oxygen and my carbon dioxide is very precious. The air I breathe in and breathe out is very valuable. So let's get the message out. Will you do that right now? Send this link out to everyone. I believe tonight, even if you can find seven people that you can call and wake them up and say, get up. It's, it's no time to sleep. It's time to hear the word of the Lord. God is going to bless you for doing it tonight. So I want to welcome some of you tonight from wherever you are tuning in from. God bless you tonight with whichever social media platform you are on tonight. Hallelujah. I want to just welcome all of you. Praise God, all my spiritual sons and daughters. God bless all of you. Good to see so many of you. Good to see so many of you, our partners, our friends from everywhere. Praise God. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us. Canada, good to see you tonight. Trinidad and Tobago. Praise God. Simone, God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Uh, Wallace from Jamaica. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. All of you that are tuning in from all over the world tonight. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you for being in Jillian. Amen. All the way from Toronto. Thank you so much. Praise God. Thomas from Georgia. Praise God. Your lives are going to be changed tonight. I'm telling you. You've never seen a night like this before. In fact, some of you all need to call your family. Call your families. Call some of your brothers and your sisters and say, hey, God is coming to talk to us tonight about what our family, the curses that your family has been under all these years. So this is that time and that opportunity to take full advantage of this prophetic moment. Praise God. Amen. So God bless you. Now, anyone is on uh, Facebook, uh, that, that was YouTube, Facebook. Thank you so much, Jillian. God bless you in New York. May the Lord bless you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Myra and Dothan. Praise God. God bless all of you people as you're coming into the prayer room and into the throne room tonight. God bless you tonight, Patrice. Thank you so much for tuning in. May the Lord bless you and your family tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hatcher, praise God, from Melbourne, Florida. Praise God. Amen. God bless you tonight, Jillian, all the way from Texas. All of you, wherever you're watching from tonight. Hallelujah, Katie, and thank you for all the fire. God bless you tonight. We're going to get ready to go in to this time tonight. I'm telling you, I am burning in my spirit. I am so much on fire. And feeling the presence of God. Because last night so many of you were blessed. Or, or just in the other session. Thank you. God bless you, Kaana. God bless you, Dominica. Amen. Thank you so much, St. Lucia. All of you, my spiritual sons and daughters. Australia is up again tonight. I don't know what time it is in Australia. Praise God. Amen. But they are with us tonight. And thank you, Bahamas. Thank you. Thank you so much, all of you. Praise God. Amen. The Bronx, New York, Edwards, all of you. Oh, my God. Everybody is now waking up. That's a good thing. So share the link. Amen. I want you to share. Take one more opportunity. Share it. Call some people. Let their phones go off and tell them, please wake up. God wants to talk to you tonight. He wants to deliver you in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise be unto God that always causes us to triumph. I give God praise tonight for my intercessors, my prayer warriors that are all with us, and also my husband. God bless you, Apostle Nordage. Thank you so much. Amen. God bless you. Let's go tonight. Let's get right into our our the word from the Lord. Curacao, always good to see you. Somebody is watching out of Russia. Wow. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. You know, it's amazing that people think that everybody in areas like that um, are heathens. My God, everybody's not a heathen. And in, 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 in some of these countries, you have to understand 
that it is the politics of the country and everybody from these countries are not heathens. There are people that love Jesus. There are people that, that, that are, are dedicated to knowing the Christ. And so I celebrate all of you tonight. God bless you. Annalise from Virginia. Let's go for it now, beloved, because time is very strategic tonight. And God wants to speak words to you. This night is going to be an interactive session. I want you to, to amen, to, to respond. Amen. In your chat box, I'm going to drop some scriptures in there. I'm going to drop some bullet points. And I want everyone to get it tonight. Praise God. I told you last night I began to share. I told somebody, amen. Somebody asked the question, where did Prophetess Manny Nordich come from? And they were asking, my God, where has this woman been? <laughs> I've been here all along. Sadly, you're just discovering me and just discovering our broadcast. But you're still in the good time. You're not too late. Amen. So God bless you tonight. Thank you. I also want to say in case I forget later on. We're getting ready this coming Sunday. July the 31st. We will be in South Florida. At our South Florida ministry. 7301. Praise God. Oakland Park Boulevard. In Lauder Hill, Florida. You don't want to miss this Sunday. Last Sunday it was so amazing. The fire of God came down in this in that in our, our facility there were no more chairs there were no more standing room but we saw the hand of God delivering people I mean left right and center people were being delivered out of all their troubles and they were being delivered out of all their affairs so I believe tonight beloved God is going to touch you as you make plan go to my website once we get off of air and register at mannynordage.org Praise God, Sunday morning July 31st 10 a.m. Praise God, don't miss it It's called the Overflow The Fire Revival Overflow Let's talk tonight About, praise God Our subject matter Praise God, amen Last night we dealt with exposing And destroying um, Witchcraft powers and, witch and witchcraft Spells and we dealt with that last night because we wanted people to understand that witchcraft is not a joke. It's not a, fa a phantom of somebody's imagination. It's not um, just a fairy tale. But we've come to know that there are people that believe in witchcraft. There are people that day to day practice witchcraft. And so... Because this is true, God began from the beginning of time. God spoke and told the children of Israel the way he felt about witchcraft. Is this true tonight? He told the people that he hated witchcraft. He said, I hate witchcraft. Now, I gave you a scripture and I showed you last night how the Spirit of the Lord said he hated witchcraft so much. He said, Amen. That all liars and all homongers and all those that practice, amen, witchcraft, sorcery, shall be cast into the lake that burn it with fire and brimstone. So God expressed his hatred and his dislike for witchcraft from the very beginning. Then we saw in the book of 1 Samuel, the Bible said, that, amen, witchcraft stubbornness is as witchcraft and as iniquity. So rebellion is as, sorry, the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity. So people that practice witchcraft, God is saying to you tonight that you're operating in a spirit of rebellion. You're operating in a spirit of rebellion and you're operating in a spirit of of iniquity when you are stubborn and don't want to change from your wicked ways so God does not like when you are dealing and operating and practicing and in, 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 in employing witches are we understanding that tonight so the spirit of God has given us an instruction and he said now, in, 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 so that was 1 Samuel chapter 15, and verse 23 said, Rebellion is at the sin of witchcraft, 
and stubborn is as iniquity. Stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. So whenever you get involved in witchcraft, God is saying you're operating in a spirit of rebellion, a spirit of stubbornness, a spirit of idolatry, and you're practicing iniquity. Iniquity is a type of sin that you have no intentions of turning away from. You know it is wrong, but you continue to do it anyhow. That's the way a witch operates. I want everyone to hear me. That is the way witches operate. They operate in a spirit of stubbornness and a spirit of rebellion. They have no intention of changing. Most of them, it will take the power of God to deliver and stop a wicked person who is practicing witchcraft. Amen. To change their ways. I never said it was impossible. I just said it takes the power of God to come upon that person. And they have to then see the error of their ways. They have to see that what they are doing is wrong. So a witch known by any other name is a witch. And I'm going to show you tonight why you should not associate yourselves with witches or wicked people. Or people, praise God, who are intent on waking and performing witchcraft. Is anyone hearing me tonight? You want to separate yourself from these people because they are of their father, the devil. Unless they are willing to repent, praise God. If they are not willing to repent or change their ways, then you should, praise God, have no fellowship with them. The Bible said light should not have any fellowship with darkness. In other words, darkness and light cannot have be, be in fellowship. Hallelujah. Praise God. Bitter and sweet cannot come out of the same fountain. So what am I saying to you tonight? I'm simply trying to tell you, praise God, that you have to get yourself out of the fellowship of people, praise God, amen, that are not, amen, trying to change their ways, that are not trying to come out from up under these demonic strongholds. So God wants to do this tonight and he wants to set you free. Praise God from captivity. He wants to set you free from all your bondages and anything that will cause you to error in your ways. Anything that's going to cause you to go into error or cause you to go to a place of damnation and destruction. And that's where witchcraft will lead you if you are not careful. So I gave you all these scriptures last night. I want to get right in tonight to our subject matter. Praise God. I want to get right in. Praise God to our subject matter. 21 signs that tells you that you are under a witchcraft attack. 21 signs that tells you or shows you that you or someone you know is under a witchcraft attack. Somebody say, tell me, prophetess. Somebody say, please tell me. I want to know. I need to know. 21 signs that you are under a witchcraft attack. 21 things I'm going to share with you tonight. Those of you that want to change, those of you that want to see change come to your family, then this is your opportunity. Say something. Let me know you are there. Let me know you are listening. Praise God. Let me know that you, you're, you're available for this understanding. Because what you don't know is what's going to kill you. What you don't know is what's going to affect your life. And that's what is happening to so many people. What they do, ignorance, I told you. Ignorance is, praise God, is sweet poison. Ignorance is sweet poison. Ignorance is sweet poison. Why is that? Because knowledge is present, but you ignore what is available for you to help you. And you go ahead and eat it or drink it anyhow. It tastes good in the mouth. But once it gets inside the belly, it kills you. So ignorance is sweet poison. Hallelujah. It tastes good going down. But after a few minutes, you realize that what just happened. You drank something. You ate something. So God is saying, do not be ignorant concerning the devices of Satan. I begin to share with you last night. And I begin to tell you, praise God. How so many of you are under an attack of witchcraft in your job, in your workplace, 
And some of you don't even realize it. That you are working or living there. Witches and warlocks. And you are just going on your business. Not even realize it. That even some of you where you grew up. That you grew up in a neighborhood. Or in a place. Where they were practicing witchcraft. So sometimes. That thing that you were accustomed to. Will visit you when you are older. And that's why you find some of you. Even as though you are Christians. Even though you are born again. You still find yourself going back. To witch doctors. Or calling a psychic network. Because no doubt. There is an altar. Or there was an altar. Amen. Erected or established in your family. Tonight, I want to help you to get free. Some of you are, amen. The enemy is after you to try to initiate you into their culture. And, and some of you are under an attack, a demonic attack. And you can't understand, prophetess, why is it I'm going through this vicious cycle? I keep going through the same thing over and over again. Praise God. It is because they have air marked some of you. They have air marked some of you. So that you will be the next person. You all have seen this in our services. Just recently I was delivering a young man. And he began to manifest right in the service. And as he began to manifest, I began to pray and rebuke that demon spirit. And then the demon spirit manifested. Full blown manifestation. And I say, who are you? And he said, I am the great, great grandmother. The great, great grandmother? Yes, My God, what are you doing here? And she said out of this very hideous, cold voice, leave this boy alone. He belonged to us. He belonged to who? To us. Now, as soon as you hear that, he belonged to us. That right there is a, a message that you're now dealing with an ancestral spirit. This is not just a spirit spouse or a spirit husband or a spirit wife. He belonged to us. They're speaking about their clan. They're speaking about their family altar. And the, the spirit, the demon, began to speak through the mouth of the young man and say, leave him alone because he's, he belonged to us. He is supposed to carry on our powers. Now, can you imagine this young man is going through trials and tribulation like crazy. Can't figure out why he's stuck on his job. Not getting a promotion. Can't figure out why he's from one relationship to the next. Or even though he's married, he's having major problems in his marriage. Why? Because there's a spirit of witchcraft that is tormenting him like pesky roaches. <laughs> and, and is attacking him. And now this demon manifests because fire causes the snake to manifest. The fiery presence of God is what causes demons to show up and manifest. Remember now last night in the other session that I told you. Somebody asked a question. How come when they go to other churches the demon in them is fine. They say they can go and sit in another church and not, nothing happens. The demon never comes up. And I begin to tell them, I said, the demon, and they said, but when they come to our, came to our service, to our fire revival, as soon as Apostle and I entered the building, the person said they began to convulge out of control. Now, I want you to understand, this is a sensible person with a degree, with a master's of art degree. And they began, they said they couldn't, they couldn't stop themselves until they were on the ground. And the next thing they can remember is me standing over them and saying, get out. You are free in Jesus Christ's name. I say, well, you mean to tell me that you were absent? They said, prophetess, I had to go home and watch the video seven times because they could not believe that, praise God, that was them fluttering on the ground. Praise God, like a fish out of water. And they was, I mean, they, they tear up the whole row. Amen. Beat up half of the altar wakers. And then they was down there foaming at the mouth. They say, please explain to me. And as I explained to them, they got a full understanding that from they were a little girl, they remember that their grandmother, praise God, another grandmother, did you notice? Had a box, had a box in the closet. 
And no one can touch that box. No one can go near that box. Hallelujah. If you went near that box and touch anything on that box to do with that altar, you were beaten with switch, beaten with wood, beaten with everything you could be beaten with. And they say, but no one never told them that what that box was all about. And I said, that box represented the altar of your grandmother. People of God, I'm talking to you tonight because I am here as a part, as, as a servant of God. Praise God. Amen. A part of the movement of the spirit of God in the earth to tell you that you can be delivered by the power of Jesus Christ. Don't let anybody tell you that you have to stay being harassed and overtaken by these demons. You could be the curse breaker in your family. Right. Oh my God. Am I talking to someone tonight? You could be the one to stop the curse from going on in your family. Because God's hands and his eyes is upon you tonight. Somebody right now, just give the Lord praise and glory. Give the Lord praise and glory. Give God praise right now. Come on. Take a minute. Roshatarabha. Roshakatabaha. Roshatarabasa. Come on, guys. Give God praise. Koshataraba Raba Soto. Roshababa Shata. Roshataraba Nerebosa. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you tonight. Come on, I want to see more of you. Praise God. I want to hear from more of you tonight. Praise God. Amen. Please, quickly, get this word out to some of your friends. Those of you that are just coming in, welcome. This is the servant of the Lord, Prophetess Dr. Maddie Nottage. And I'm here talking about the power of God to deliver. Praise God. Somebody asked me the other day, praise God, what qualifies you to talk about this subject? And I told them, Praise God, never been to a witch doctor in my life. Never practiced any level of witchcraft in my life. Praise God. But God has called me and he said, I want you to set the captive free. And this was an audible encounter I had with the Lord. Praise God, at the age of 16. And my life has never been the same. So how do I know? Because I can see things in the spirit. And I don't boast about it. I'm just simply telling you that God has opened my eyes. And I'm not just talking about my physical eyes. I'm talking about the eyes of the spirit. And I can see things on people's lives. As soon as they pass before me. Or as soon as I enter the room. This is a gift that God has given to me. And I don't play around with it. And I don't take it lightly. The gift is not for my glory. The gift is for the glory of God. And so many are called. But few are chosen. Few people have been hand selected by God. And given, praise God, a profound uh, 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 a gift, anointing of sort. Everyone, praise God, been given grace. You have the grace of God, right? You have the grace. By grace, we are saved through faith. So everyone has the grace. You can operate in gift. You can operate in the gift. But then there comes another level called the anointing. The anointing is given to those who are called and chosen by God. So even though... Everyone can have a gift. You can have the gift of the spirit, the gift of discern of, of spirits, the gift of, of, of prophecy, the gift of the spirit of the word of knowledge, the gift of, of performing miracles. But God places his anointing upon those that he called and he chose. I'm sure you are understanding right now. Then God takes it to another level. Those he has given an anointing to, he releases another level of power. That level of power is that realm now where you can confront demon powers and you are not overtaken by the demon. Are you hearing me tonight? Yes, that is another level, amen, in the things of God where that person, amen, the grace is given to anyone who can operate in a gift. Praise God. But now there's an anointing that God releases on the called out, the chosen. Praise God that he has called and handpicked to do specific things in the earth. The anointing is, amen, for people that God has set apart. That's why I don't understand how all of these people, Frisbees, are calling themselves prophets and they've never been called by God. Oh my Lord Jesus, another day, please, Holy Ghost. But nevertheless, I'm just trying to help people out tonight. Have you been called and chosen? Then now you're given power. 
Jesus said, I give you power over all the powers of the enemy. So that's why some of us, everyone should be able to cast out a demon. Hey, but there are certain levels of demonic intrusion into certain people's lives, into certain families, in certain regions that even an angel will say, hey, hold on. Don't rush into that one. Praise God. The disciples tried to cast out a demon and they couldn't get it out. Jesus said this kind, which means there's a specific kind, is going to take an endowment from God to deal with. That's why God is raising us as his born servants in this hour. We don't have time to play games. I don't have time to play games. I don't joke around when I come to doing my assignment. I want someone to hear me tonight. I don't have time to play with the devil. I enter a zone is called the zone of no negotiation. I don't negotiate with demons. Praise God in this hour and in this level. Because Satan himself knows he has but a short time. People are, this is not the time to backslide. Some of y'all thinking y'all can backslide. And then next year around December 31st, this year you're coming back. You will discover that last year you tried to come back and you ain't reached back yet. You know why? Because Satan has increased his, his game. He has strengthened his demonic spirits and empowered them. Praise God because why? He knows he has but a short time. Somebody said, I got to be delivered tonight. Be Somebody delivered said, I got to stay delivered. I got to stay free. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. So, I don't play around with demons because I understand. Amen. Demons given an opportunity. They don't want to play around either. They know they're on the last minute right now. So, let's go back to our subject. If we can go back to it tonight. Please, those of you on Facebook, I, I need to know if you are hearing me. Praise God. Amen. I need to know if you are there. I need to see more of you responding. Hallelujah. Amen. So, amen. Somebody said, yes, I'm here, prophetess. Yes, I'm being helped. If you're getting an understanding, if you understand what I'm saying, say, I am understanding. Say, it, I'm understanding. Praise God. I'm understanding. So, let's continue now. So, witchcraft. I told you last night now, don't play around with witchcraft. Don't play around. Playing around with witchcraft is like you playing around with a snake, with a cobra, because witchcraft and the kingdom of darkness, especially witchcraft kingdom, is controlled by the black serpent. Are you all hearing me tonight? It's not just the python. It is not just the serpentine spirit. It is a black serpent. Amen. And Satan now is carrying on like a dragon in that kingdom. He is empowering witches, but they're empowered by a kingdom of the snake. Are you getting me tonight? So, but their powers is coming from the place called altars. Amen. Everybody type that in your chat quickly. You have to be delivered tonight. Everything that happens in this world happens over an altar. Everything that happens in this world happens because something has passed over an altar. Praise God. Are you people hearing me very clear out there? Yes, Let me know if y'all are hearing me on social media. Very, very clear. Praise God. Amen. Yes, so very crispy, clear. Rice yes. crispy, clear. Yes, Amen. Frosted flakes, clear. <laughs> Hallelujah. So what is happening now? You have to make sure that you have an understanding. So everything, everybody put the word altars. Remember I told you last night that witchcraft, witchcraft, amen, amen, simply means, amen, to, to switch. Witchcraft, when you hear the word witchcraft, witchcraft switches everything. Witchcraft comes to bring what is called di diversion, diversion. People, when you hear a witch, a witch is somebody on an assignment to divert you from the plan of God, from the will of God, from the calling of God, from the assignment of God. So their ultimate goal is to bring diversion. Write that in your chat. Witchcraft comes to bring a diversion, okay? It diverts you from what is really real and what is supposed to be. So please type that quickly. It comes to bring demonic diversion. The next thing you must understand about witchcraft is witchcraft comes to twist. It twists things. So instead of you seeing the person face or the person for who they are, it switches the person out from being normal to acting abnormal. It switches your organs from functioning normally 
So your organs now functioning abnormally. So witchcraft comes to bring diversion. It comes to twist. It comes to switch. And I'm going to give you one more word. Very good. Very good. Very good, guys. Very good. Very good. Okay. Very good, Charlene. Very good. Very good, Annalise. Type it in there. Very good. Okay. Very good, Myra. Okay. Watch this now. In addition to diverting, twisting, switching, please type this word in. It also comes to alter. So witchcraft brings up demonic alterations. It alters. Oh my God. This is, this is what I have to tell you. It alters the way somebody is. So it alters their minds. It alters your thoughts. It alters the way you're supposed to be existing. Have you got... So somebody said, please, prophet, slow it down. I can't go no slower. Okay, I can't. If I go any slower, I'll be a sleuth or a sloth. And I don't want to go in snail mode tonight. I got to hurry, guys. You all have to just come back and watch it, okay? You all just have to come back and watch it. So witchcraft is dangerous in the sense... It twists people's minds. It diverts. It causes a diversion. So instead of you seeing one thing, you end up seeing something a different way. Have you all ever noticed when somebody is under a witchcraft attack, you cannot reason with them? Like all you try to reason with them, you trying to get them to see, hey, something wrong with you. They ain't seeing that. They trying to tell you something wrong with you. You trying to tell them, let's pray. They don't want to pray. Because there's a spirit that comes over them. And it, it twists and it changes, right, sons? Yes, okay? Yes, and it makes their features look different. Yes. Oh, yeah. So even you can see, even though witchcraft is a spirit, is a spirit, is an evil force, you can tell when someone is under a witchcraft attack because their, their demeanor, their physical demeanor switches. Their physical appearance takes on a different form or a different shape. That's two I already give you. How do you know when you're under witchcraft attack? Even their countenance becomes darkened. So you will see some people and you'll say, why that person look like they so dark? Like they look dark, dark, dark all of a sudden. And now somebody said, well, what if you're already dark? Amen. Or you're already purple or you're already black or you're already... You know, crispy, dark. Well, they look even darker. Some These are some of the things that you can even look at someone. I'm talking about their continents now. Yes. Their continents begins to look like, they, that don't even look like the person. That, that's number three. Number four, they carry the character of a zombie. They tend to look zombified. These are people that are under witchcraft attack. Come on, somebody. They begin to look and carry the demeanor of a zombie or somebody that's like in a daze. Like they comatose. Okay, so the experience level of comatosa is what I call it. So somebody is saying, amen. Uh, 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 you're saying, Alicia, to pray for your uncle David. Praise God. He's exhibiting this thought of... Uh, of, of mannerism, they look stiff, they look as if they've been through some type of shock, or some type of, and these people no, are no longer themselves, so somebody should write down, those are the first five I gave you tonight, I plan to give you 20, 21, praise God, I have over 1,001, but tonight I'm only going to give you about 21, okay, so this is how to know when somebody is under witchcraft attack. But before I go any further. With giving you some of the symptoms. That you can know when somebody is under witchcraft attack. Can I just go back and please read. The, and, and, and give you. Amen. Go back to the definition of witchcraft. So witchcraft. Is a diversion. It is a twisting. It is a bending. Witchcraft is, comes to bend the person. But it doesn't only bend you physically. It bends you emotionally. Mentally. Uh, okay, and it can also bend you physically. So those are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. So it bends, and under bending, it bends you emotionally. It can bend the person instead of them being happy. They are now sad. They look depressed. It brings chronic depression. 
So that's number eight. It brings chronic depression. Somebody write for me. Praise God. Amen. So as I re go back over them, I can recant them. Connie, I come in agreement with you tonight for your father, Gregory. Praise God. And he will also be delivered from the spirit of witchcraft in the name of Jesus Christ, in the mighty name of Jesus. So I'm going to show you people tonight. God, help me, Holy Ghost. Time, 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 time. Uh, oh, Lord, help me, Lord. So okay. time is, is <laughs> this will be time. Witchcraft, <laughs> hallelujah, also works with time. Y'all got to watch that now. It's another day because time is also a spirit. But amen, so the time that you spend or you uh, you deal with, amen, going to these witch doctors, you're, you're now interrupting your cycle of life. So let's go back. Witchcraft is, amen. So the word craft simply means to, to, to design or to redesign. Craft means to what? Design or redesign. When somebody's working witchcraft, they're trying to redesign your life. Oh they're trying to mess it right up. They're trying to give you a different, amen, outlook, a different design. The different from the one God gave you. Wow. So you will discover that person don't act the same, don't look the same. They was on their way to college. They ain't got no mind to go to college no more. Mm. They was on their way. They was about to get married. They don't want to get married no more. Or they get married and it's short-lived yeah. because a craft has been engaged. Yeah. Are you understanding me? Praise God. So this is how witchcraft works. So witchcraft is the act of the virgin simply twisting, bending, binding, stopping, blocking, all of these things. So it is the use and the abuse of, of power. Witchcraft is the use or the abuse or misuse of power intentionally. I told you last night witchcraft is not a mistake. People don't work witchcraft on you and just say, ah, sorry about that, man. Sorry about that. Uh-uh. They did it intentionally because they want to strut their evil powers. And so don't trust anyone as they are scorpion, some of them, in their spirit. So, amen, witchcraft comes to intentionally cause pain to somebody. And it does it painstakingly. It doesn't care. Praise God. And witches work witchcraft painstakingly and they do it passionately. Because they hoping to see you afflicted. When a witch is going to put a spell on you, a, a spell or a hex or a, uh, or, or a curse on you as we say it, they want to see the effect of that thing on your life. So most of the times, they watch and wait to see you now succumbing to what powers, evil powers, they send against you. So that's why you have to put on the whole arm of God. Yes. As a child of God, you got to pray every day. You can't be going to sleep, amen, snoring, and you ain't say the Abba Father prayer. Oh, Praise oh, God. <laughs> in other words, now you got to graduate from the Abba Father prayer. Just Abba Father, which I never, or oh, thank you for the world so sweet. No, you got to get a prayer that's packing power when you begin to realize that you are under some level of witchcraft attack. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, ma'am. So, witchcraft, witchcraft uses its powers to manipulate. All those words I give you, bending, binding, twisting, yes. praise God, diverting. Yes. It is narrowed down now into a few words, which is like manipulation, which is intimidation. We often say control. Witchcraft comes to bring what? Manipulation. It wants to manipulate the way you think, the way you function, the way your money thinks, the way your money function, the way your body thinks, the way your body function. Witchcraft comes to bring manipulation, control. It don't want to see nothing going good about you. It want, if you have a happy family, it won't break up your family. If you look as if you're winning and you succeeding, it want to take your mind away from winning and succeeding and give you a lazy, tired mind. Somebody should shout, the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Yes, he is. Yeah. He yeah. most certainly is. So it can bend you. It can bend you emotionally. Now, I'm saying this to you tonight because I want people to understand. Remember what I always tell you, God's power is greater than witchcraft. Yes, so don't let nobody fool you tonight. I don't want nobody with their one teeth. Amen. Amen. Laughing on this saying, yeah, we are powerful. We are witch. No, you are foolishly weak and ignorant if you are a witch. Amen. Because why? Your power is going to fail and you're going to fail with that power. 
because God is omnipotent. He is all powerful. I wish somebody believed this tonight. I told you yes the other session. I've never seen a successful witch. Amen. After practicing witch for, witchcraft for so many years. I've never seen a successful witch. I saw them die miserable. I saw witches die in the hospital and calling, saying, and, and cussing and saying the fire is hot. Take me on this fire. Who the whatever, wherever. Put me in all this fire. That's how I saw witches die. I saw them die miserably. I saw them die alone. I saw them die, praise God, with things biting them all over them. And them screaming and asking, help, help, help. See, because why the devil is not a fair player. He will use a human body to have another human body. And when those demons are finished with you, using you to work witchcraft on somebody else, those same demons will turn on you and begin to, amen, mutilate you. I know, I know so many, amen, cases of delivering people and their bodies are mutilated. And I said, oh my God, what is this? And I said, were you involved in any type of witchcraft? And they said, prophetess, I, I was involved in witchcraft. And now, so when the devil feels no, they're no more use, he begins to destroy their physical body, their mental well-being, and their emotional state of affairs. Somebody say, Satan, you are defeated. Satan, you are defeated. In, my life, in my life, you will not prevail. You will not prevail. You will not prevail. You will not prevail. In, the in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You will not prevail. You will not prevail. In the mighty name, in of, the Jesus. name of Jesus. Somebody say, in the mighty name of in Jesus. The mighty name of Jesus. I, have I have power and victory over every wicked spirit, every wicked spirit including, witchcraft. including witchcraft. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give God Hallelujah. praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. So let's go back. Please let me know if I'm helping you people tonight. Am I helping you all tonight? Yes, Amen. Am I helping anyone out there tonight? Should I be continuing on? Should I go on? Oh, yes, Praise God. So witchcraft. Amen. It is the shifting of something from one thing to another. It is, amen, taking something and shifting it to another place. Amen. A witch can never totally, totally deliver you. You people that like to go to witch doctors because you feel like something crawling or moving in your body. Or there's some sickness going on in your body. Let me give you all what you need to know about witches. They cannot heal you. They cannot cure you. They cannot heal you. It is called diversion. So they move the demon from one part of your body to the next part. Are you all hearing me tonight? Yes, they move your problem from the back to the front. <laughs> they move your problem from the top to the bottom. Yeah. They just keep diverting and shifting things around. Because they have no real power. Their power is a wicked power. And the power of God is the only power that can truly deliver you tonight. So, they will be cast into hell. Amen. And everyone who is a sorcerer will be cast into hell with them. So, let's go on now. Praise God. All different types of witchcraft. I don't have time to get into all that tonight. I told you already there's household witchcraft. There's, amen, there's household or family witchcraft. Where there's some families steeped in all manner of witchcraft. There are some families that have, uh, uh, I'm going to tell you what those family altars, witchcraft looks like. They are built on altars. There's political witchcraft, governmental witchcraft, scientific or medical witchcraft. Where, the, where they will introduce things to you medically and say everybody have to take this thing or do this particular thing. But it's witchcraft because it's manipulation. It's trying to take away your rights. It's trying to infringe on your beliefs. Am I am I getting through to someone tonight? Yes, I don't want to go into that place, God. I want to stay, praise God, on, on air tonight. So please understand what I'm saying to you. So God is now saying, I want to deliver you. So some people who are working witchcraft, their witchcraft is to ensnare you. Their witchcraft, praise God, is to bring you under its gravitas pull to the point where you have no mind or no thought on how you're going to move forward. So it traps you. It, it, it paralyzes you. It sometimes debilitates you. These are how you will know. That's number one. Nine. How do you know you're under a witchcraft attack? Because you become almost paralyzed. You have no more mind to do some things. You feel um, uh, disabled or debilitated to an extent where you don't even have the courage to get and go. Some people have no mind to work. They cannot even work anymore. So they then begin to become classified in, in the mental arena as psychotic in some degree. 
So the witchcraft affects the mental arena of that person's mind. This is serious, people of God, because now the person mind, they're mentally attacked, mentally challenged. You know, people begin to argue whether somebody have a nervous breakdown. Is it a mental breakdown or, the, or, or is it a demonic possession? Well, whatever you want to call it, it only could be a demon involved that gets a person to that extent for their mind to break down. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, it had to have been a demonic attack. Something happened. Something entered the mind or the life of that person that discouraged them to such a degree that they could no longer function properly. So their mental arena became challenged. So how do you know sometimes you're under witchcraft attack? The mental arena becomes challenged. And that person finds it difficult to function properly on a daily basis. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, things that you should know. Things that you should be aware of. Things that you should be, praise God, cognizant of. You cannot function because why? Your mind mentally cannot be able to articulate or function as a normal human being. Because why now? A demon, a witchcraft spirit has taken over the mind. Now, there are some people you see in my deliverance services or in when I do one-on-ones or the deliverance clinic. Some people, even though they may come to the service for deliverance or help, you look at them and while they are there, their mind is not there. Just the shell is there. That's when a demon, I call it a fifth degree manifestation, where that person don't even know their name. They can hardly talk. You have to ask the family member, what is the person's name? Blah, blah, blah. It is now because they are a zombie. Mm. They have gone into a state now of where the demon has taken over the mind. There's still some small fragment that may be there. Because that person may be able to bathe themselves. That person may be able to feed themselves. But in terms of their cognancy level, you will notice it's absent. They have no cognance, cognancy. Okay. Homo, Rama Meombe, Palo Meombe, all of this stuff. You know, Orisha, Obea, Voodoo, all of these things are forms of Sandria, forms of different powers of witchcraft that people use to work, amen, and, and to perform different rituals so that they can bring people under the snare or the attack of witchcraft. Whatever the culture is, and whatever people call it, it is all still evil and it is all still wicked. One thing you will notice in the book of Galatians chapter uh, chapter 6, I believe, amen, it talks about witchcraft being one of the works of the flesh. Amen. What the works of the flesh are these. Witchcraft is called a work of the flesh. So people of God, you need to crucify your flesh, crucify your deeds, crucify everything, praise God. That, amen, the enemy has caused some of you to open the doors too. So, amen, that's witchcraft, amen. It is there, amen. And so people will use, amen, spells or different types of incantation or, praise God, chants, amen, to activate, amen, a charm to, to, or a, a spell um, um, to activate uh, uh, a level of witchcraft to manifest in your life. Are you understanding me? So they will use different words. Some people use music and they use different chats and they will call the name of that person. They will also create potions. Some people, they give it to the person. Some people, they carry it in the spirit to the person. So are you understanding me tonight? Some people, they eat things in their sleep or drink things in their sleep and they wake up and they realize something happened to them that night. Some people are bitten by animals in their sleep and they wake up, they feel pain in the area where they dreamt that they was bitten by a snake, by a dog, by, uh, by, huh? by a bat, yeah. like something that attacked them, a uh, scorpion in their sleep and they wake up and feeling that exact area where that thing bite them. That's not just a happenstance. That a dog was running by your house that night. And the dog said, Ruff, ruff. Uh, you know, I want to come in there and bite this person while they're sleeping. No. That is a targeted, 
projected or a targeted arrow that was sent to attack, attack you as a person. God wants to deliver you tonight. Yes, Lord. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, Lord. God wants to deliver you tonight. Their spells, when they work their witchcraft, their spells are activated by using some level of incantation. It is the way the word is spoken. It is the way they call your name. It is the way they combine words with a series of slogans or statements. And it's how they do it. Repeat it and passionately. People, uh, prophetess, are you trying to tell us how to wake witchcraft tonight? How to cast a spell? No! In the name of Jesus, I'm telling you how they fix you. I'm telling you why now. You cannot, this why now. People wonder sometimes, why do we pray like this? Why do we tell you to pray passionately? Because the thing that attack you, attack you passionately. Why, why do we tell you praise God? Some, why do we say in the name of Jesus? In the name of Jesus? In the name of Jesus? In Jesus' name? Fire of the Holy Ghost? Fire of the Holy Ghost? Fire, because that's how they attack you. Yes, they attack yes. you. Calling in your name. Saying affliction. Affliction. Affliction on Gina Dina. Affliction on... They, that's how they call your name. So you cannot go right there. Oh, right now, Lord Jesus. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, Lord. My dearest Lord. That's when you want to get intimate with the Holy Spirit. That's when you want to get into your deep-seated worship. But my God, when you realize you're in a battle and you're being attacked by these wicked spirit, you got to get up and act like a warrior. You got to you gotta declare war time and say, in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you, Satan. I bind up your plans. I stop your works. In Jesus' name. And then you got to call the demon spirit by name. You got to say, you spirit. You spirit. I rebuke you. Uh, hello? What spirit is this? This is a witchcraft spirit. So you call it out by name. When Jesus, let me show you all this tonight, guys. You all ready for this? When Jesus was delivering the people, he called the spirits out by name. Right? Yes. Did he not call him by name? Yes. He said, you unclean spirit. Yes. Come out of the man. You deaf and dumb spirit. That's right. Come, out. Come out of the child. Yes. You foul spirit. Go. He called the demons out by their names. Come and on. he rebuked them and cast them out. Yes, People of God, more than ever before, the Lord is saying to me, Mary, rebuke every evil spirit. And cast them out of my people. Why? Because God doesn't want you to stay in bondage. You could be living a life. And if you're not careful, you could come to terms and agreement. Comfortably living with a witchcraft spirit. Hmm. I want to say that again. You got to be careful. Because if you're not careful, you could get comfortable to the degree where you are tolerating a witchcraft spirit. Anybody hearing me up in this house tonight? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I wonder if anybody hearing me or I hearing myself. Yeah, you all hearing you me? Yes, so it's remember good. I told you last night that witchcraft is always performed over what is called an altar. I also told you that an altar is a place of spiritual negotiation, uh, 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 praise God, a, a place of legal, amen, entry into the natural realm. It is the place where spirits meet. Yes. Am I talking to somebody tonight? Yes, Remember I told you that altars are living. I need yes. to tell you all something else about an altar. Especially a witchcraft altar. So there are two types of altar. Mm-hmm. There's an evil altar and there are holy altars. Yes, you determine what type of altar is going to be in your life. One thing you need to know about an altar is that, amen, an altar is what gives, amen, or releases authority to spiritual activity to function in the earth. The altar... Is what gives, amen, a, a authority or a demon or a spirit or an angel. Any type of spiritual activity that needs to take place in the earth, the altar gives authorization wow. to do that. Yeah. So that's why we don't, we don't joke around in this ministry about altars. That's why it is my goal to get one of these altars that God has given to me in every house. I, I'm not going to stop until every house that I know has an altar in it. Because an altar is a serious thing. 
I, you can't, you have a juicy burger. You better shoot that burger. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise him. You have that, but we gonna have some pork ribs tomorrow. You better throw that, blow that, pork, get a dynamite and blow that pork ribs up. You need, I don't care if it's beef or pork. You need an altar yes. in your house. Yes, <laughs> oh my God, guys. Y'all got me laughing and this is a serious message. You need an altar in your house. Somebody said, I need an altar prophetess. I need an altar prophetess. Type that quickly in your box. Say, I need an altar. Either your altar is going to be a holy altar or your altar is going to be a witchcraft altar. What, everything that happens in the natural realm, amen, if before it happened in the natural, it has to happen in the spirit. In order for it to happen in the spirit, it has to pass over an altar. Are you understanding me tonight? So an altar, one of the purpose of the altar, one of the main purposes of an altar is to give a spirit legal rights to continue carrying on something in the earth. I want that to get in your head because an altar is what gives the spirit the legal right to carry on something. I know some of y'all trying to go sleep on me tonight. But I send the angel of the Lord to pinch all of y'all and wake y'all up. In Jesus' name. In, in the Jesus name of Jesus name. Christ. Because, amen, you ain't got to go to bed early tonight. Amen. Come on. This is a, this is a good time to hear God. Yes, hear God so you can change. An altar, amen, is it, 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 it gives legal rights for, for certain activities to continue going on. I, I, I want y'all to mark that word. Because I want to show you all tonight how witchcraft, witchcraft, and witchcraft altar in a family gives that family or gives those people, gives demons operating in that family the legal right to keep going on. Yes. Altars don't know time. Altars, altars have no expiry dates. A demon from an altar could function in a family for a thousand years. Wow. And it ain't about to get tired. And it ain't about to expire. Altars do not have do not run out of time. Wow. Uh, only time, only thing that stops a, a demon from operating from an altar is the blood of Jesus Christ. Is the fire of the Holy Ghost. Are you people hearing me? Yes, not the blood of a goat, the blood of Jesus Christ. So that is what now interrupts an altar. Outside of that. An altar will go on forever and ever and ever. Wow. Are you getting me tonight? Yes, That's why witchcraft, when the spirit of witchcraft enters the family, it keeps going on and on and on. Now, some of you all tempted to click out of this, out of this, this conversation. Because wow. y'all feel like y'all getting sleepy. Again, shorty, I tell you, get up, slap yourself. Watch your face. The devil doesn't want you to hear what the spirit of God is saying to you tonight. Yes. So this is very important because yes. I want to pray for you at the end of this teaching tonight. And I'm not going to be lo much longer. I want to, I want to help some of y'all. I want to go back now yes. to showing some of y'all. An altar is a system. It's a place. It could be a person. It could be a domain. An altar can be a region. There are certain places are set up. Remember I told you, there are certain buildings are dedicated as an altar. Yes, there are certain businesses you walk in and you say, oh my God, I get a creepy, airy feeling around that yeah. place. That's because that place has been dedicated as an altar of witchcraft, an altar unto Satan. I'm sure y'all are understanding me. Yes, Praise God. So there are certain places that you dare not just enter in there and think you're going to go in there and come out just as you've gone in. Because that place is an altar. You don't want to sleep in that place. There are some places you go in them houses are haunted. There are some places businesses are haunted. You don't want dark to catch you up to some of them places. <laughs> Am I talking to someone tonight? Okay, I know I'm smiling, but I'm serious. So some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Just as there are evil altars, witchcraft altars, there are holy altars. For an example, a place could be anointed as an altar for God. A person can be anointed as an altar for God. There are certain foundational places and families that are anointed as altars for God. Just as there are evil altars, witchcraft altars, there are also holy altars. 
And Jacob came across a place. Remember? Yeah. In Genesis 28. And he yeah. said, I didn't know it was the place of God. I didn't realize that God's presence was there. What happened there, son? His grandfather or his great-grandfather built an altar in that place. Abraham had built an altar there long before he was even born. And what happened? When Jacob stumbled across that place, he lay down there to sleep. Yes. And the Bible said that night he saw angels as ascending and descending. Remember what I taught y'all in the school of ministry? The angels were not descending and then ascending. The angels, as he fell asleep on the pillow, on the pillow, on the rock that he called the pillow, the angels were going up and coming down. A lot of people get confused. They say he saw angels descending. Wow. And go read it yourself. Yes, no, the angels was ascending from there because that was the place where Abraham, his great-grandfather, had dedicated as an altar. Right. So those specific angels dwelled right there. Right. Yes, mom. <laughs> Are y'all getting this tonight? Yes, mom. So be careful of witchcraft. Amen. Be careful of the spirit of wicked people. Some of them, they don't want to change. Some of them, amen, no matter how you preach to them, only Jesus can knock them out and deliver them out of all their wicked sins. But I'm seeing a lot of witches coming to the Lord now. So an altar is a place where spirits meet. So a holy altar is a place where prophets pray, men of God, women of God pray, where some of you all pray. But there are some witchcraft altars where demon spirits meet. Demon spirits that meet to a witchcraft altar meet there so they can carry out the wicked assignment of the one that is employing them. Are you all hearing me? Yes, so now let's go. Let me give you all in a nutshell. Amen. These things. How do you know when an altar is at work in your life? Now I already gave you all about nine of them. Praise God. But I'm going to rush through and give you some more. Let me know if I'm helping you. Please say prophetess you are helping me tonight. Prophet, say prophetess you are helping me. Tonight, Amen. Prophet, Please still tonight. send your link out. Some people are asking for help. Some people, this is the first time they're hearing teachings like this. This is the first time some people are even hearing. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So be careful of your dreams. Because your dreams are sometimes can be influenced. Even though God can speak to you through your dreams, also the wicked people, they can enter your dreams. Witch, witches can infiltrate, send demon spirits to enter your dreams to alter what God wants to do in your life. So, let me give you in a nutshell some of the things so that you will understand. When you are under witchcraft attack, prophetess, how do I know when I'm under witchcraft attack? How do I know when my family is under witchcraft attack? How do we know? How do we know? What are some of the signs that we are under witchcraft attack? Here you go. Praise God. Amen. When you're under a witchcraft attack, I already gave you eight of them. So I'm going to blast by these ones. So amen. So get them as I go by them. When you are under a witchcraft attack, you can always tell when someone is under witchcraft attack. There is what is called a consistent pattern. A, con a consistent pattern. Now, I'm not just talking about, okay, let's just say for an example. You feel bad one day. Yeah, of course you feel bad. You ate all that greasy chicken. That's that one day. But when you feel bad the same time every day, and you know that you did not eat, amen, or eat something, and I'm talking about consistent patterns. Everybody type the word consistent. consistent. So consistent patterns can be signs that the spirit of witchcraft is present in your life. And now how do you know? Because every opportunity the enemy brings, it, it, it is happening. So there, if, there, if, it's a, if, it's a, if it's a holy altar, if it's God blessing you, you can tell it's God blessing you because something good is happening consistently in your family. You're coming into good blessing. You're coming into good favor. But when it's witchcraft, you're always consistently coming into bad things. Right. Some people call it bad luck. I don't believe in luck, but they call it bad happenings, bad occurrences. Okay? So, 
Then an altar, a witchcraft altar, has been raised up, bearing your name, bearing your name yes. on it. What begins to happen? Praise God. Amen. You begin to praise God. Come under the tax, hallelujah, of what is called an evil work. So, some people, they begin to feel like um, extreme, extreme sickness in their body. Health things begin to happen that the doctors cannot explain. So, this is now a sign to you that maybe you're under some type of witchcraft attack. Now, it may also be where other members of your family are also, all of a sudden, everyone in your household is chronically ill. Amen. Are you getting me? Yes. All of a sudden. So this is a consistent pattern where that person died from what is called cancer. The next person died from cancer. The next person said they have a tumor in their breast. The next person said they have, everyone getting all of a sudden these consistent patterns. Of sickness. Okay. Are you hearing me? Then you may also. So this is another sign. You're under a witchcraft attack. Because now you're beginning to feel. You, you, you come up under an addiction. This is a consistent pattern of addiction. Showing up in your family. Showing up in your life. Out of nowhere. Somebody said the other day. They just had an extreme desire. To smoke. And they didn't know where that came from. They just pick up the habit. Somebody else said they went, they went to college. They was never a smoker. But okay, somebody else said, well, you hang around smokers. All of a sudden, they felt this, this person was smart, intelligent. Then they just got addicted. Yeah. So extreme forms of addiction to drugs, to alcohol, mm -hmm. things like that. This is a, a, a telltale sign that maybe somebody has sent a spirit after you to cause you, praise God, to be under this type of addiction. Extreme delay and stagnation. Oh Praise God. God. Extreme delay and stagnation. You are in a delay switch. No matter how you try to break out, you are delayed. You always late. Never on time. You are slowful. You are slow moving. You're moving like a snail. Amen. Extreme. I don't just that's your nature. It is to the extremity. Where you ever talking to somebody and they talking so slow. Like you want to just say, hey, you know, like hurry up. <laughs> okay, because now it is a spirit that is overtaking the person. Like, you know, somebody said, well, maybe because they used to smoke too much weed. Maybe so. But that's why I say there are some things that are given to people off the altar of witchcraft. Everything is not just physical. Some things are extremely. And that thing can be because a spirit of witchcraft is present. There's another spirit. That is called the spirit of barrenness. Where people cannot produce anything. I ain't just talking about babies. I'm talking about barrenness. They are unfruitful. Their financial situation is beyond repair. They are they're, they're just barren. Nothing coming forth out of them. You wake and you can't see where your money is going. Your money is like it's being eaten up by a spirit. Amen. So sometimes that's a sign. That a spirit of witchcraft is attacking you. Then there are others, praise God, that are having, amen. They get pregnant, but they have miscarriage after miscarriage. That is a sign that a spirit of witchcraft can be attacking you. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, repeated miscarriages. Repeated miscarriages. I mean, miscarriage after miscarriage. You lose another one. You go to this the particular semester. Trimester, you lose another one. You lose another one. Or it's a pattern in your family. This is a wicked spirit. You cannot tolerate it. There are some people, praise God, they uh, they get pregnant and the baby is stuck in the tube. The, the pregnancy is stuck in the tube. And then there has to be uh, um, done away because it's not going to survive in the tube. Are you understanding me today? So these are uh, signs that this person is under a witchcraft attack. There's also where some people are accident prone. No matter they walk, they bump, they bump yes. their head. They keep falling down. Like, oh, gee, sorry about that. Oh, the, you know, they drive the car. Something come from nowhere and bam, hit them. When they're hitting somebody, somebody hitting them. Oh, my Lord Jesus Christ. I know I'm bearing witness with so many of you. 
That means somebody is working witchcraft. Somebody is sending spells and demons out to affect your life. Praise God. Amen. So this is now a wicked spirit. Accident prone. There's a spirit of death. Amen. I probably don't know. I don't know what right now. Praise God. Amen. A spirit of death. A spirit of death. Praise God. Amen. Huh? What number am I on? Eleven. Eleven. This including the eight when I gave them earlier? Yes, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, but this, all of this is of different different uh, signs. Yes, all that is happening in the witchcraft arena, you will notice it develop a consistent pattern. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So re renumber. So it's a consistent pattern of happening. Are y'all understanding me tonight? It's not just a regular pattern where, okay, like I say, you were, you you were sick. No, this is now. You are unexplainably sick. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? Yes, ma'am. So, and it's a pattern of it. So, are you just coming in? God bless you tonight. I'm talking about the things. How to know that you're under witchcraft attack. And I'm almost done. So, stick with me. So, there are deaths in, in families. Unexplainable deaths. And then, there are a de it's a death syndrome moving through the family. This one, you just bury this one. You just bury the next one. You next, you just bury. I mean, how much people are you going to bury in one season? It is a spirit of death. So it's a witchcraft spirit. A curse is there, and it needs to be dealt with. Am I talking to somebody tonight? Yes, then there's what is called almost success. An almost success uh, uh, syndrome where people are always about to succeed. Now, I want to deal with this one because I want some of you all to understand what's going on with y'all. Do you remember a season at a time where every time you're about something great is about to happen, all of a sudden, something happened and you got a phone call back and they say, oh, we, we know we told you your loan was approved, but um, something came up and your loan, you no longer qualify for the loan. You are about to have a success story and you start telling everybody, and you start dancing and celebrating. And then all of a sudden they say, oh, you know what? We, we gave the contract to somebody else. Are you all hearing this tonight? Yes, it is because a spirit of witchcraft is attacking you people. Ah, Jesus help me, Holy Ghost. So it's where you are almost successful. But instead of you having success, you have a lot of failure. So these, you never finish anything. You start stuff. Yeah, you all know anybody like that? That they yes, keep starting things but it never finish. Yes, the foundation been down for 5,000 yes, years. Yes, and you be like, yes. what's up with this dude? What's up with this person? They can't finish nothing. If you're not careful, they will have a bunch of old breakdown cars. They'll have a halfway finished foundation. An unpainted wall. Bush growing up all around. That is because these people are sometimes under a type of witchcraft. Somebody got them. Spellbound. <laughs> oh Lord, constant rejection at the doors of opportunity. Constant, 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 constant rejection at the doors of opportunity. No matter how you try, no, 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 no. You keep missing opportunities. You keep missing opportunities. You keep going in the failing lane. You throw the bowling ball all going in the gutter and none hitting none, wow. not one ping pong. So these are demons to tell you now. Amen. These are demons. Amen. And it's telling me to tell you that witchcraft is present. I dealt with health issues already and I dealt with mental disorders. Praise God. That's probably I'm over 15, 20. I may be over 100 right now. I gave you all so many mental disorders, mental disability, disability. Where the person is mentally um, challenged. Okay. Um, so these are things like this. Fetishes. Anxiety. Extreme. Extreme. Unexplainable. Financial. Hardships. Is anyone hearing me? Extreme. Extreme. Financial hardship. You can't even explain. Why your money acting like it don't know you. You going one way and your money running the next way. Like, what's up with this? Your money acting like it's a stranger. And you trying to hail it down and the money saying, no, no, no. It's because now sometimes a spirit of witchcraft is there 
to try and stop you and make you look poor and foolish. So I am now, I've hit number 21. What I'm giving you now is called gravy or bonus, okay? I told y'all, I have over a thousand and one that I can give y'all because this is what I do every day. I deliver people. I came to set the captive free. I came to break chains off of people's lives. I don't, I don't have to, I don't have to, I don't have to wonder about this. Amen. God says, deliver my people. Cast out devils. These signs shall follow them that believe. If you're in a church and they're not casting out your demons, hey, run. Because why? That obviously those people don't really care about your well-being. Jesus cast out demons. Yes, That's the bottom line. And I don't care who you are as a pastor. I pray that you don't get mad. I pray that you get glad and call me or come for some help. Praise God or find somebody who can help you because you can't be lying to the people and telling them all oh, demons are not real and demons went out with the apostles. That devil is a liar. Look in the lives of those people. You can see they're tormented. You can see that many of them are crying out for help. So stop lying and stop talking foolishness and get the demons out of God's people. So Jesus cast out demons. We should cast them out also. Witchcraft, how do you know that you're under witchcraft attack? I'm going to give you a few more, then I'm going to pray for y'all. Don't move, don't go, don't even blink too long. Amen? So you suffer from maybe things like spiritual degradation. Okay, the state of experiencing humiliation where everything is under, amen, a, 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 a type of attack where things are supposed to be valuable, but it's like it's no value to nobody. Spiritual separation or demonic separation. Amen, amen, this is where things just leave you. You're ostracized, you're criticized, you're, 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 you're put in a place in a bin, and you they just throw dirt on you. Confusion, demonic confusion of the mind. It is, a, it is that dilemma that is characterized by, characterized um, by, uh, you know, by a state of confusion, just uncertainty, misunderstanding all the time, misunderstanding. So this is now that place where you find yourself. Um, demonic frustration. How do you know that you're under witchcraft attack? These people always irritated, sucking their teeth, always, you know, aggravated, huh, annoyed, irritated, you know, can't, can't get things together. Okay, then they're suffering from what is called the, uh, 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 a spiritual or demonic, I should say, vexation. It is the state of an encounter, periods of, of displeasure. You know, when nothing could please them, they just in annoyance, they in anger, they impatient. You ever meet those type of people? All right. These are how you know that you're under demonic or somebody is under demonic attack. Dissatisfaction. Okay. This is a place where you have no satisfaction. Nothing some people do for that person can please them. They're always a man, restless, dissatisfied, irritation. Irritation. They're irritated all the time. Oh, irate to the degree where they're impatient again. Angered. Annoyed. Are you understanding me? Spiritually irritated. Ha! Ha! Those type of people like that. Sometimes these people are attacked by demons. They're under witchcraft attack. Aggravation. Aggravation is the degree of annoyance and irritation. And it is now where people are so in a place of discomfort and displeasure, aggravated, short of patience, hopelessness. Ah, I just don't have no patience. I want to give up. They have people are under demonic fury that is cast classified by extreme op oppression. You know, s extreme oppression can't lift themselves up. Ah, don't know what direction to go in. Don't know which way to turn. Okay, so the fury or furious spirit manifests with intense anger. They want to snap at you. They want to just cuss you. Are y'all understanding me? Yes, this one I'm about to give you is called the spirit of weariness. People are so weary. They so weary. They so tired. They only want to keep the blinds closed. They only want to go to sleep. They want to find somewhere and just go under the tree and sleep. They feel a sense of despondency and hopelessness. And it's too much for you all tonight. Mental fatigue, I dealt with that already. Mental levels of dysphoria, just out of it. Cannot function. Cannot function. Mind battles, 
racing thoughts. They even hear voices. Last one I'll give you all tonight, which is probably number 40, is anxiety. Okay? Anxiety. Anxiety. Where the person is so angry. They're so in a state of uh, what you would call, you know, a, a dilemma of just cannot get it together. All right? I am so, you know, nervous, fearful, but angry. All right, and fear is another category in and by itself. These people are very ang ang anxious, they're fearful. They don't know what to trust, who to trust, what to do, where to go. All of these things I gave you tonight are just a few out of my book. I don't have any, I don't see any of my books on set with me tonight. But I have a book there, it's called Breaking the Chains um, from Worship the Warfare. I have another book that's called Why Everyone Need Deliverance. Praise God. All of these books are books that the Lord gave me to give to you so that you can grow in your spiritual walk with him. And all of this stuff I'm giving you tonight, it's in all of these books and more. It is so much stuff. It, 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 will, it will grow you up real quick in the spirit and help you to understand, praise God, what is going on in your life. So there's a bunch of them. They're out there. They're on Amazon. Praise God, this one is why everyone needs deliverance. And I told you last night, this book is, is never never enough of these books in stock in our bookstore. It's always off the shelf. And of course, this other one is, amen, Breaking the Chains from Worship the Warfare. This book will help you to be delivered and help you to deliver others. So get these books. This one is a little encyclopedia and it's full and it's loaded. And it could give you, amen, all the spiritual fortitude you need to overcome the curses of the enemy, including the spirit of witchcraft. I want to get ready to pray for some of y'all. I see some of y'all, praise God, that are on this network tonight and you're asking for help. This is not a good time to click out. This is a good time to click in so that I can help some of y'all, praise God, so that I can pray for some of you tonight. Amen. I know some of you are asking for help. And I want to pray for you right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So let me know, praise God, some of you. Amen. You've been asking for prayers. You were asking for help on last night, on the day. Some of you were calling the prayer call center. Somebody said, I need deliverance, prophetess. I need help right now. Praise God. I want to help you. Hallelujah. I want to help you. If you're on Facebook, I want to help you. Praise God. Amen. Don't go anywhere. I want to pray for you. Praise God. Tanya. Praise God. Amen. I see you tonight. God bless you. May he touch you. May he deliver you. Praise God. Amen. On Facebook, whatever social media platform you are on, watching tonight. Praise God. Amen. Do not go anywhere. God want to deliver you. God want to help you. Somebody say, help me, please. Help me, please. I need help. I need deliverance. From the spirit of witchcraft. Somebody said, I need I need deliverance from the spirit of addiction. Can I tell you, God want to deliver you from that wicked spirit? Praise God. Some of you are never like this. Some of you are never like this. Yes. But it's because you, people have put spells on you. And have put, amen, uh, what is called witchcraft on some of you. Now you're carrying on in a certain way. And God said, I want to deliver you from the hands of that enemy. Praise God. When somebody puts a spell on you or put a curse on you, amen, they put it there because they are trying to destroy you. And this is why tonight so many of you are crying out and saying, Prophetess, please deliver me from witchcraft. I see you, Janie. Praise God. They're on Facebook. God is going to deliver you tonight. Praise God in the name of Jesus Christ. Sharon, God is going to deliver you tonight. I believe in the power of deliverance. And I believe the word of God said, Oh, the son set free. It's free indeed. So ain't no joke about it. Ain't no question about it. Whether or not it's God's will for you to be set free. You are going to be free. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Jesus wants you to be free above everything. He said, I wish that you prosper. And I wish that you be in health. As your soul will prosper. So which means that something is happening in your soul. In your life. That that soul affliction is going to affect your life. Your livelihood. And that's why so many of you tonight. 
Praise God. Truly, God wants to deliver you tonight. Rosh Karabanda Rabasata. Rosh Kerebo Sata Rabande. And some of you are lifting up your, your prayer request tonight. And lifting up the name of your family. Praise God. Hallelujah. Whether you are the Johnson family or the, or, or, or the Fitzgerald. Praise God. Whether you're the Swan family. Praise God. God said, I'm going to deliver you tonight. Rosh Karabanda Rabasoto. Rekerebo Saprakata. Rose Telamando Robosha. I break the curse from over your life right now. Somebody under the sound of my voice. Praise God. Before we go, I got to pray for you. I must pray for you tonight. Because I can sense in the realm of the spirit. That some of you, amen, the enemy wants you to believe. That you are at the end of your rope. But that devil is a liar. He wants you to believe tonight. That there's no hope for you. But I declare in the name of Jesus Christ. That hope is here tonight. Because the blood of Jesus is greater and more powerful than any witch doctor, than any wicked spirit of witchcraft. Praise God. I feel the presence of God. I feel the power and the glory of God is here to deliver. Rosh Somebody open your mouth up again to pray. Don't you dare go from this channel. Don't you dare move from this place. Beloved, this is your day. Your family needs deliverance. Your loved one needs deliverance. And God has allowed you, praise God, to come into this altar. To come into this holy altar. So that this curse that's looming over your lives can be destroyed once and for all. Satan has no power, no dominion in the life of the believer. I don't care if that person who's working against you is a loved one. Is an in-law or an outlaw. God said their powers will fail them tonight. I don't care who wicked against you. And your spouse. And your house. Or oh, the wicked shall not prevail. He said the gates of hell. Shall not prevail against the righteous. And I heard the spirit of the Lord say. That the time of the wicked is over. Yes. I wish somebody was hearing me tonight. Yes. The time of the wicked is over. The season of harassment is over. Praise God. Whatever they put down in your house. I saw in the realm of the spirit. Where there's somebody you have no peace in your house. Like there's an evil spirit walking up and down in your house. Tonight I command that evil spirit to get out. Go in the name of Jesus. Leave that house and go out. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Say to take your leave and go out. Loose God's people. In the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. every spirit that comes to bring agitation, aggravation. I'm listening right now to the Holy Ghost. And there's a husband and a wife. You're listening to me right now. You love each other, but there's been a spirit of confusion and evil confrontation breaking out between the two of you. I command that witchcraft spirit. Go out of your house right now. Get out of your marriage right now. And to leave in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every wicked arrow that was shot against you. Every evil plan that was conspired against you people. To kill you. And to bring confusion in your midst. Get out. Get out in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Father I raise my altar tonight yes. my yes. holy altar right. the altar of the Lord Jesus Christ that has the blood of Jesus Christ sprinkled all over it Father I raise my altar in the realm of the spirit people of God agree with me right now I raise my holy altar Rosh Shata. As I raise my altar in the realm of the spirit. As I raise my holy altar in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that this night my altar shall speak in the name of Jesus. My altar of righteousness. My altar of holiness. My altar that bears the blood of Jesus Christ. It shall speak. Tonight, in the name of Jesus Christ, it shall speak powerful things, it shall speak holy things, it shall bring deliverance. 
Somebody's being delivered right now. Somebody's being delivered right now. Somebody's being set free right now. By the spirit of the mighty God. I see chains breaking. I see demons of witchcraft leaving. In the name of Jesus. As I raise my holy altar. I command every wicked altar. That is bearing your name. That's bearing your family name. That's bearing your children name. Be destroyed by fire. Be destroyed by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Be destroyed in Jesus Christ's name. People of God, I command it to be destroyed. In Jesus Christ's holy name. There's no name under heaven that can fight against the name of Jesus. I command every wicked altar. You woman of God. You man of God. You child of God. That's going to attack severe attacks of the enemy. I command that wicked altar. That's fighting you. That's fighting your progress. That's fighting your finances. That's fighting your health. I command that altar to give up. Yes. To give up. Give up. To release you. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Name of Jesus Christ. People of God, God said, I'm setting you free right now. Hallelujah. I release my fire, said the Lord. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus. To break the spell off of some of you. Yes. And break the spell off your spouse. I break the spell off your children. I break the spell, every spell that they put over your mind, that they put over your spouse, that that person cannot love you anymore. I command the spell broken. Every sickness they put in their body to make that person, amen, non responsive, to make them impotent. I break it off now. There's somebody right now, you're crying out for help. Because your marriage is being challenged. Yes. And it would seem as if your spouse is not able to perform in, in your intimate times. I am hearing the Lord say, tell you tonight, the spell is broken. The curse is diminished by the fire of Jesus Christ. By the blood of Jesus Christ. I command that person. I command your organs to function. I command it to function. Jesus name. Jesus name. That may not be a concern to some people. But the Lord God is bringing it up because somebody is asking for help. And if you are not ashamed, just receive it in Jesus Christ's name. So I speak healing to your body. I speak deliverance to your soul. I speak it in the name of Jesus. I command you, spirit of witchcraft, get out of the life of God's people. Spirit of sickness and disease, get out of the life of God's people. Loose them. Loose them. Every witchcraft spirit, come out. I uproot you out. I uproot you. Somebody put your hand right now. Somebody put your hands on your stomach right now. Every demon spirit of witchcraft trying to hide in your body. It will not hide. I command you out right now. Come out. Loose your powers and go out. Spit your way out. Spit your way out. I cast you out. I cast you out. I cast you out. I deliver God's people right now. I deliver you right now. I deliver you in the name of Jesus. I deliver you, Pauline, in the name of Jesus. I deliver every one of you, Violet. I delivered your family in the name of Jesus. I delivered your loved ones in the name of Jesus. I deliver you, Myra, in the name of Jesus. I deliver your family in the name of Jesus. Rosh Katabasata. Every last one of you that have been passing through affliction. Sharon, I deliver you tonight. By the blood of Jesus Christ, I deliver you, Tyra. In the name of Jesus, be set free. In the name of Jesus, Helithia, I call your name in the realm of the Spirit. I call your name in the realm of the Spirit. Be delivered from every demonic influence. Be delivered from every demonic influence. Every spirit of witchcraft. I see people being delivered all over the world right now. I see people being set free right now. I see chains falling. I see chains breaking. I see people in their mind. Some people being attacked by witchcraft. In their minds. In the name of Jesus. Chanel, I deliver you right now. 
I command your womb to respond to the word of God. I command your womb. I command the spirit of barrenness to go from you in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak forth that your baby will grow and develop within the womb. In the womb. In the name of Jesus. And will come forth and will go to full term. Normal and healthy. Every organ. Every limb. Normal. Normal brain. Healthy. You will go to full term. Yes. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Shakatala basata. I break the curse off of every family. I break the curse off of every family. I break every generational curse. Every ancestral curse. Every bloodline curse. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say that I command you to go from God's people. I command you to lose them right now. You will not prevail. You will not prevail over their minds. I come against mental attacks. Mental attacks and mental disorders. In families. Because of the presence of witchcraft. Every evil spirit of bipolarism. Schizophrenia. Every spirit of arrested development. Every evil spirit. Of slothfulness. Of laziness. Of slowness. Of mental retirement. Of autism. In the name of Jesus, ADHD, every learning disability, you witchcraft spirit, go out. Go out. Somebody say, go out in the name of Jesus. I speak supernatural deliverance. I speak divine healing over you right now. Every last one of you people under the sound of my voice. The spirit of God is there right now. There's no barrier. There's no distance between us. I am right where you are in the spirit. God said, I'm touching you. I'm delivering you. I send my servant tonight to deliver you. I send my word to set you free, says the Lord. God said, you don't need to be oppressed. You don't need to be under oppression. You don't need to be suppressed. You don't need to be taken over by these evil spirits. I command that witchcraft spirit of anxiety to go, of fear to leave you, of affliction to go from your house. In the mighty name of Jesus, Satan, I cast you out. I cast you out. Every spell, every spell, every evil incantation, every evil word spoken out of the mouth of wicked people and witches and warlocks. I command those words and spells that were released over the minds and lives of the people of God to be destroyed by the fire of the Holy Ghost right now. I release the judgment of God to go to every witch and every person that is intent, intent on being wicked against righteous people. Yes. Let the angel of the Lord punish them. Let the judgment of God be upon them unless they are willing to repent, unless they are willing to give their life over to Jesus Christ. As Simon did in Acts chapter 8, that bewitch the people. Let it be a mighty revival. To come to the wicked in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, set your people free. I speak vindication over the life of your people. I speak deliverance even over those that are Christians. That are being attacked in their businesses. And their finances are being attacked by wicked people. Let that attack be no more. Those that are going through financially. Where demons are devouring their resources. And their finances. I break that wicked spell. And that wicked curse off of God's people. Somebody give the Lord a praise right now. Somebody give God a praise right now. Somebody give God glory right now. You are the victory in the name of Jesus. You have the power in the name of Jesus. You are an overcomer by the blood of Jesus. He said no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment. He said you shall condemn it. I speak spiritual and divine vindication to every last one of you tonight. That God will vindicate you and that God will elevate you far above your enemies. That everything they're working against you, it shall fail away. It shall become like chaff before the wind. And the angel of the Lord shall chase it away and chase them away. I command every demonic nail. And pins and needles yeah. and arrows to fall out your mind, fall, fall out your head. body. Fall out in the mighty name of Jesus. Be healed. Be healed right now. 
Be delivered right now. There are several of you believing God for documents to be straight. And your documents have been blocked by wicked people. Some of them from the country you came from. I prophesy tonight your documents shall be blocked no more. I prophesy right now that there shall be an acceleration of miracles to hit your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That you will see the good of the Lord. And in their land, according to Isaiah, you shall possess the double. I call for your residency approval. I call for your citizenship approval. I call it for in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare in Jesus' mighty name that your status has changed. Your application has been stopped right now tonight. Approve. Approve in the name of Jesus. Those of you that are believing for her loans or approval for a new car, new home, an apartment, whatever, I declare it is approved. I declare your season has changed. Your life has been rearranged. Those of you that are believing for fruit of the womb, I prophesy your womb shall bear fruit. I prophesy that your womb shall bear fruit. I prophesy that you shall come forth with multiple powers. Twins, triplets, get ready for it. Because if God said it, it's going to happen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. you, Somebody give the Lord a mighty big praise. Somebody give the Lord a mighty big praise. Somebody give the Lord a mighty big praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to the most high God. To the great I am. To the I am that I am. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. God is great. And he is greatly to be praised. The word of God says, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the mountain of our God and in the city of his holiness. People of God, God is great and he is doing great and mighty things. Your miracle is already happening. Some of you are spitting up. Some of you are feeling like demons are leaving you. Some of you for the first time in your life, you're feeling your pain is gone from your body. Some of you, your back is healed. Do what you could not do before. I promise you that demon is no more. You have the victory over that that devil in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Someone say, I have the victory over every demon power, including witchcraft. So God is worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going out of the same. His name is worthy to be praised. So give God praise for your testimony tonight. You know, God is working so many miracles and I'm happy to see all these prayer requests and also some of the praise reports. Because God is working miracles in the lives of his people. When you connect with a holy altar, a powerful altar, your prayers are not only heard, they are answered. And that's what this altar represents tonight. Many of you are going to call me with praise reports. In fact, this Sunday, some of you all are coming with testimony. Praise God. Yes, you heard the, you heard the good news. You heard it. The rumor is true. Praise God. Apostle and I will be in South Florida this weekend. 7301. Praise God, West Oakland Park Boulevard, Lauda Hill, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So don't miss this opportunity. It's called our fire revival overflow, which means, praise God, we in the overflow now. And you know what that means. My God, anything likely to happen, praise God, hallelujah, because the overflow is a sign that, amen, the presence of God is in a place abundantly. So don't miss this coming Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Praise God. Amen. This coming Sunday, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Some people are already flying in today. Praise God. And some people are coming in tomorrow. Make sure you do yourself a favor. Go on MattyKnowledge.org. Register right now. Register you and your whole family right now. Just to reserve your seat in Sunday morning service. Because last Sunday, people were shocked and in awe that they got here after 9 And there were no more seats left in the auditorium. So, amen. Come and experience the glory of God, the goodness of God, the power of God. Amen. Come. Those of you that have been asking about your altar last week, amen. All the altars were gone. Um, We hope, praise God, that hopefully we will have some more altars back in stock this weekend. The warehouse after the tour. You can imagine, we won that tour, went to New York, went to Houston, and came to Florida. And whatever was left from all those other cities in the warehouse, we bought out last week. And we are waiting for the, the next shipment to come in from our uh, outer, other 
warehouse. Amen. By the grace of God, we hope it gets here in time. For those of you that have been asking for your altar, you're to, able to put one of our altars in your home. Praise God. I'm agreeing with you tonight that the Spirit of God will help you and we will help to make it happen. Because I want to see an altar erected in every family. Praise God. This is the time to build God a place in your house. A sacred little spot where you and your loved ones can go there and kneel before the Lord. Your God, your maker, and worship the Lord. Praise God. Satan will not touch that place. Demons will not enter that place. And if they enter, they will back up out of there because they will say, the altar there is lit by fire. Every altar that you have, you have received from us is connected to this altar, which is the altar of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus, the grace of God is in our life and ministry. So to God be the glory. Eh? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So many praise reports. I'm not going to get to many of them tonight. But those of you that want to give, I want to just pray a prayer of blessing. A prayer of blessing over you tonight. Those of you that want to sow into this anointing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I like to see when people are dancing when it's time to, slow, to sow. <laughs> and they're releasing fire. Thank you, thank you. Yes. Some people are sowing on the word tonight. And some people are just giving God praise that they had an opportunity to sit at the prophet's table tonight and to be learned. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, learn me, prophetess. Learn Hallelujah. Prophet. Teach you. Amen. Amen. Yes, you are. I'm happy and I'm excited that some of y'all were able to take notes and you go back and watch it again. Listen, I myself some days have to go back and rewatch because it's so much coming out. Amen. So much knowledge, revelation. We are those from Mount Zion. And he say, in Mount Zion, Shall deliverance be found. Amen. So God bless you. Those of you that want to sow tonight. We are, we are still in revival this weekend. There's yes. no registration. So you know what that means. Praise God. We want you to sow. We want you to sow liberally. I want some of you to go to my website right now. MaddieKnowledge.org Take out a tangible seed offering tonight. If this word or this teaching bless you. You cannot pay for it. But you can give a seed. Amen. To give God thanks for it. So I want you, as many of you will do that right now. Maybe there's several of you that can sow a seed, a one-time seed, give up $1,000. If the Lord so laid it on your heart, you can go ahead and do it. If not, just do whatever he tells you to do. Someone may sow a seed of 500. Someone may sow a seed of 120. That's the number of overflow. Praise God. So just give us, God will give it to you tonight. It is $5, $50. I appreciate it tonight, and I believe as you so remember this is still, we're still on the mission field. We're not home, we're in the mission field, Amen. and we're winning souls for the glory of God. So we want you to give your best seed gift, give your best offering at this time. Go to my website, they'll pin it for you. It's maddieknowledge.org, maddieknowledge.org, and you can give your best gift there tonight. Hallelujah, whatever currency you're sowing, go careful, give up. Praise God, the gospel is free. Hallelujah. It is free, but it's more blessed to give than to receive. So tonight as we give, we give with joy. We give, praise God, with enthusiasm. We give, praise God, knowing that God is able to give back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. He will cause men to pour and to give into your bosom. You know, I want to share a praise report. I mean, you know, people like to click on as soon as you start talking about giving because they figure now I, 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 she ain't about to teach no more. But you know, that's a, that's a coward way to, to trip out. I, I say when it's time to sow, it's time to get in your, your pocket and just say, you know what? This word blessed me so much tonight. I want to sow into the mission field. Amen. Jesus said, when you give, it shall be given back. Good measure, press down, shake together, run it over. Thank you, Karen, for your prayer tonight. She said, I pray that God will bless prophetess and her family. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you for those of you that are sending a prayer for me and Apostle, or Apostle and I. Thank you. Some of you are sowing. Some people are saying, prophetess, I'm sowing a special seed. Thank you. I see that tonight. May God bless you. Thank you. Some other persons are saying, prophetess, I'm going to sow. I'm going to go to the website and sow. Our website is safe. You can go there and so thank you. God bless you. If you want to send us a check, it's it's be uh, Believer's Faith, uh, Believer's Faith Outreach Ministries. You can 
sign a check there or if you can sign to Matt Nottage. Amen. Ministries International. A lady on last that was in the service on Sunday when I was prophesying uh, stepped out in faith and sowed a seed a seed and as I was prophesying I said lift your wallet up. Lift your bag up. Lift your phone up. And I say, God's about to bless you people in this church. God's about to bless every one of you under the sound of my voice. And she said right then, she was like, God, I just wish I had the money to sow a big seed. But this is all I have. And she took that money and I watched her as she came and dropped that money on the altar. People of God, this as she was coming, I said, I'm telling you. You're about to get a miracle that's going to shock you. And the lady came forward, dropped that seat on the altar. People of God, when she woke up, praise God, on, on, on Wednesday morning, I think it was, she said she heard her phone went plink. She checked. There was a notification in her phone. And she said that a job that she left, I, I won't give the whole story, on, but a job that she left, and came to the ministry, sacrificing everything. Called her and said, we have a check for you. And remember that I gave a prophetic word. I said, some of y'all are going to get what is called, uh, what do they call it now? Back pay or, you know, uh, uh, some increment. The lady got a miracle of over $34,000. No way. Over $34,000. I mean, it was such a shock. She had to check and double check and triple check because she couldn't believe this miracle that happened for her. People of God, all you need is one word from the mouth of God that will change. Some people will say that's a gimmick. Some people will say, ah, you know, I don't believe. Well, this woman can have her own testimony. God help us on the day when she do get her to testify. The church is going to be really on fire because this is a true miracle from God. I said, watch God. It's being released right now. And I, I saw when the Spirit of God took over some people. That's why you can't be afraid to let the Holy Ghost take you over. And some of y'all be laughing at people when they get taken over by the Holy Spirit. No, that takeover is because God is shaking some things off of them. And putting a blessing upon them. Tonight, I prophesy that each one of you will discover a miracle. Or a miracle will discover you. And your life will never be the same again. So let me just pray a prayer over all of you that are giving tonight. Amen. Giving your life to the Lord. Or even giving a seed offering. May God bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus. I bless your people. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I bless them with an abundant blessing. May their fields and their harvest be great. May everything that they have sown in this altar come back to them. Some 50, some 60. Some a hundredfold. Let them experience the supernatural abundance of heaven. In the mighty name of Jesus. I prophesy it to be so. I prophesy that this will be their yes season. And amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Somebody give God a mighty praise. Hallelujah. Give God a mighty praise. Give God a mighty praise. Hallelujah. Give him a mighty praise. Hallelujah. It is done. It is done. It is done. Somebody by the name of Shima. I don't know what your whole name is, but I hear your name is like Shima. Shima. God said, get ready for your miracle blessings. It's coming your way. In the name of Jesus, get ready for your miracle blessing. It's coming your way. In the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody by the name of Rajis. 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 I don't know if I'm pronouncing the name right. But it's like Rajis, Rajis. I don't know why that name is coming in my spirit. But God said, get ready for your mighty miracle. Shelly, get ready for your mighty miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your name is Rochelle. They call you Shelly. Get ready for your mighty miracle. That's coming in the name of Jesus Christ. God said, this time it will not be stopped. This time it will not be turned around. In the name of Jesus Lauren, praise God, Lauren, praise God, get ready for your mighty miracle. God said it's released in the name of Jesus Christ. Your pain, your suffering, your days of drought is over. Your time of a is over. 
Your time of perpetual blessing is starting right now. So I release it in the name of Jesus. I release it upon your life in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Somebody by the name of Rosemary. God said, trust me again. Trust me again. Trust me again. Praise God. You were trying to work on something and it kept falling out. God said, go back again. It's done. You will hear the answer. Yes. You will hear the answer approved in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm also hearing Hendis, like Hendrick, Henderson, Henderson, be delivered, be blessed. Receive your miracle from the Lord in Jesus Christ's mighty and holy name. Hallelujah. God bless you people tonight. God bless all of you with the love of Jesus Christ. Thank you for being with me. I hope I've helped you. I've given you, praise God, over 40 something, 50 something ways to know when the enemy is attacking you or attacking the loved ones. May your attack be over. Remember what I told you. You don't have any problem that God cannot solve. God is able to do all things except fail. Come and worship with us this weekend, August, uh, July, sorry, 31st. We'll be in South Florida for our Overflow Fire Revival. And then August the 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th. Five days of glory. Five days of honor. The honor and glory revival will be with us. Come celebrate with us. It is our weekend of honor. And we're going to be seeing the glory of God show up even more in your life. Come be with Apostle and I. August 10th, 11th, 12th. 13, 14, five days of glory. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be powerful. But this coming weekend is going to be again a weekend like no other. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday morning, July 31st, 10 a.m. in the morning. God is going to bless you. Go on to my website. It's all there. Register. God bless you. I love all of you. And I was so happy that I could share with you tonight. So until I see you again, just remember... God loves you, and we love you too. In Jesus' name, shalom, shalom.